Arches National Park is a U.S. national park located in Moab, Utah, renowned worldwide for its vivid red rocks and its breathtaking scenery. The most popular draw for visitors to the park is the abundance of naturally formed sandstone arches that the park derives its name from. A true marvel of nature, the over 2,000 sandstone arches that dot the park were formed due to the unique geological conditions of the park's bedrock. As the sandstone lays on a huge salt bed that is thousands of feet thick in some places, and it is the salt bed, along with the near constant winds and a great deal of time to erode, that eventually formed the unique topography of the region. Arches National Park is also home to a plethora of thriving flora and fauna within the park's limits as well and the area had been called home by Native Americans for thousands of years previously, as some of the oldest dated hieroglyphs within the park date back around 10,000 years. In the 1870s, the Moab area was settled by ranchers and prospectors, and in 1923, the region caught the attention of entrepreneurs that saw the potential value in the area as a tourist region. The region's buzz soon reached all the way to Washington, D.C., where over the following few years there would be numerous political squabbles over what should be done with the land before it finally became a national park in 1929 following the inauguration of President Herbert Hoover. In the years following its inauguration, inevitably, a number of visitors have unfortunately lost their lives while visiting Arches National Park, most commonly from falls on the sheer and slick sandstone terrain, or from heat stroke, as Arches is largely composed of shadeless and unforgiving desert terrain. However, amongst all of the deaths that have occurred at the park, one in particular stands alone as the most bizarre humanly preventable, and possibly also the most horrific in Arches National Park's storied history. On June 13th, 2020, one year from the day he had met his wife on Tinder, Denver area resident Ludovic Michaud and his newlywed wife, a woman named Esther Nakajigo, who went by her nickname, Essie, headed on a trip to Arches National Park. After having gotten married at home in March, at the height of the pandemic, Ludovic had brought his wife to the park to show her the breathtaking natural splendor that had been a favorite of his since moving to the United States from his native France, and as an unofficial honeymoon of sorts, and to get the couple out and about after spending several months cooped up inside due to the nationwide COVID quarantines that had been mandated over the previous few months. The couple entered the park that morning, eagerly anticipating their excursion in the perfectly sunny weather and warm 88 degrees Fahrenheit daytime temperatures that had been forecasted for the day. That of course came along with fairly strong gusting winds that promised to offer them some reprieve from the unrelenting sun above. Ludovic and as he spent the morning hiking in the park, making the trip to see the iconic delicate arch. After stopping to snap some photos at Delicate Arch, the couple then decided to have a picnic lunch along the trail back to their car. After completing their hike and finishing their lunch, after spending hours hiking in the sun in the desert terrain, the couple decided to take a break from their hiking excursion to grab some ice cream from just outside the park to help beat the heat. The couple drove towards the park's entrance in their rented Chevy Malibu and were driving on the road approaching the exit of the park, just before the visitor's center. As they approached the exit, suddenly a gust of wind swept open a metal traffic control gate, which tore through the car without any warning. The gate sliced into the car and threw Essie, who was sitting in the passenger seat, decapitating her, and just narrowly missing Ludovic, who was driving at the time of the incident. In the aftermath of the tragedy, an investigation into the incident found that Arches National Park officials had failed to properly secure the gate in the open position, as the metal latch that secured the gate was lacking a padlock to lock the latch into place, and had been held shut only by the unsecured metal latch, which investigators notably described as, quote, a tiny metal latch that was worn down and rounded. Following the investigation's revelations, 
Arches National Park officials took responsibility for the death and stated that it was an oversight that had been caused by difficulties with staffing and coordination that had been a result of the social distancing procedures and quarantine measures that had been mandated over the previous few months. Following the inquest's revelations, Ludovic and Esther's family filed a lawsuit against the park for their role in the causation of Essie's death. Ludovic sued the park for a sum of $240 million, while her family separately sued the park for a sum of $30 million as well. The lawsuits outlined several of the ways in which the park had failed to take proper measures to prevent the gate from swinging open, such as the gate had been left unsecured and held in place only by the small weathered latch, and that the gate had been designed with, quote, spear-like sharp ends that exacerbated the damage during the collision. The lawsuit further stressed that there was no way that park officials were unaware of the dangers posed by the unsecured gate as a similar death in a national park in the 1980s had taught the National Park Service the dangers of unsecured roadway gates. Furthermore, the suit noted that park officials were surely aware of the windy conditions that are a near constant at arches, as the strong winds are what etched the many sandstone arches within it that the park derives its name from, with the lawsuit stating, quote, Park officials knew, or should have known, that winds strong enough to carve stone are certainly strong enough to blow an unrestrained metal pipe gate into the path of an oncoming vehicle, the lawsuit said. The lawsuits claimed that the high monetary damages they sought were due to Essie's bright future that had been cut tragically short, as she had founded a non-profit community women's healthcare center in Uganda at just age 17 winning a Woman Achiever Award from the United Nations Population Fund the same year. She then would go on to win several other humanitarian awards before going on to create a reality television series that was aimed at empowering mothers. Just before her death, she had been named as CEO of a nonprofit organization and had enormous potential as a person to positively impact many lives and the potential to earn a lot of money for doing so, all of which, which was cut short by the park's negligence, quote, For want of an $8 basic padlock, our world lost an extraordinary warrior for good, a young woman influencer who was destined to become our society's future Princess Diana, philanthropist Melinda Gates, or Oprah Winfrey, the lawsuit stated. Ludovic sought monetary compensation was significantly higher than the family's, largely due to the trauma that Ludovic suffered as a result of the collision, as he struggled with severe symptoms of PTSD following the crash. After the collision, Ludovic found himself unable to travel in passenger cars and subsequently moved back to his native France. Furthermore, he was constantly haunted by memories of the accident with flashbacks that were triggered by seemingly innocuous things in his daily routine, as the lawsuit stated that he had even been reminded of the incident after seeing a bloody scene in a movie and after seeing a log while hiking. His therapist testified that the completely arbitrary nature of the collision made his therapy and issues much more difficult to overcome than many typical cases of PTSD, such as the cases found in many soldiers. Throughout the trial, Arches National Park did not attempt to shirk responsibility for Essie's death, but argued that the monetary amount sought by Ludovic and Esther's family was far too high, arguing that the approximate damages that should be paid out should be more around the figure of $4.25 million, stating that Esther's speculative lifetime earnings were just that, speculative, and not a concrete model for which to base the sought damages after and noted her young age, as she was only 25 years old at the time of her death. The lawsuit's trial finally came to a close on December 12th, 2022, but as of the making of this video, the verdict has not been made publicly available. Thank you all for watching.